there is usually a way. Now, I imagine, Jonathan, you could probably come up with some things that you did to find a better way to get something done. Like you got a big job you're facing. Like here's an example. Back in 1984, when I was working at the Lincoln dealership over in Dothan, all of those tempos and topazes had just come out. And the tempo topaz has got probably got one of the most bulletproof engines that Ford ever built in that thing. I've seen them things get so hot 20 or 30 times that they turn the thermostat blue and they didn't blow gaskets or burn oil or nothing. It is tough as a boot. Cast iron silver head, camshafts in the block, got a timing chain like a V8, and it's just a little four cylinder. Well, anyway, when I first came out with that platform, uh, you know how you got your push rods? It was, it was a push rod engine. It had push rods going down through these chambers on the way to the, the lifters, and it would leak all down the front of the engine. And they didn't want a brand new engine, brand new platform, just started. They, the head gaskets that they put on there weren't keeping the oil in, you know, just seeping down the front. So we had a bunch of, uh, at, a, at a dealership uh, manufacturer thing, you got a program which basically says by this time and this miles, we'll fix this. But if you go over this time and this miles, it ain't, you know, all bets are off. Then they got a recall, which lasts the life of the car. If you find a car in a junkyard that's never had a recall done on it, you've got to get that recall done. I mean, and it's free. If you take it to the dealer, they'll do a recall for free. But now a program expires with time and miles. Anyway, this one here said that for a certain number, you know, if you got less than this, less than this, before this date, less than number, this number of miles, we'll put head gasket on there for you. Paid three and a half hours to do that job. And these were, like I say, this was a brand new platform. And most of the early ones had carburetors on them, which that meant there was lots of vacuum lines and all this kind of hot water. And so I did one of those things the hard way and got the head slam off of it, and then I put a gasket on it. Then I got a look at that, and I said, you know, I can do better than this. You know, this, over at the Lincoln place, they had a big uh, piece of I-beam like that when we got over there. It's got the engine hoist on it, except it ran all the way down over every service bay. You know, I mean, if anybody needed to use that thing, they just rolled it to wherever service bay worked. So what I did was I would take all, take the valve cover off, you know, pull the, you know, loosen the rocker arm, pull the push rod down. You didn't have to adjust the valve on I just tighten them back down, you know. And then you'd take your, uh, there was a brace back there on the back that it, from the manifold down to the block. I'd take that loose, take all my head bolts out, and there was no timing belt because it was just a cast iron head like a 350. You know what I'm saying? And so I would hook that uh, chain hoist up that thing, and I'd raise that head up about this far, and that gasket would just come out of there like a business card, you know, and just work it out of there. And then I would feel of it, and it would be real smooth, because this is a brand new engine, see? There wasn't no gummy stuff on the gasket, it was just a gasket. And of course, it had a fire ring and all that. But anyway, I put the new gasket back in there, and I'd lower it right back down, I'd put all my head bolts back. I'd be through in 45 minutes, and I'd get paid three and a half hours. <laughs> you know, I had to bleed out, the, you know, coolant system, all that kind of stuff. But that's finding a better way, you know, that if they're going to pay you three and a half hours to do it, because they were saying, well, you know, they, the, field, the field service, I mean, the uh, service engineers at the, you know, where they decide what labor times are going to be, it was taking them three and a half hours to do it because of the way they were going about it. Uh, anyway, I came up with a bunch of different labor saving things I could do pretty quick and all that and still get the job done right but not have to spend as much time and all that. Don't go singing about that to anybody though because if the people up at the manufacturer finds out you're doing it faster than they pay, they reduce the pay time and it messes, messes everybody up, right? Mm -hmm. All right, let's go here. There's usually a way to get a job done. This was a 2002 Toyota Camry, 94,564 miles with a 2.4 liter engine. Always smokes on start up after sitting for a few hours. You park this thing a little while, fire it up, a bunch of smoke comes out the pipe, and you don't really see any smoke much after that. Now, what do you think? What's wrong? What do we need to do to fix this? Well, that's not a bad answer, really, but... Sounds like it's got bad valve seals in it. Valve stem seals will cause that. And this is something that we have done for eons on old V8s. And on the old V8, which I've actually got a worksheet in here where you guys are supposed to do this on this one, you pull your valve cover, you pull your rocker arms. Every time you're working on a cylinder, you put air pressure in the cylinder to hold the valves shut. You take the valve spring off, you know, you can do valve spring compressor. The cool thing about a Chevrolet is you got this bar, you know, you squeeze it down, you get the keepers out, and you pull the spring off, and you got the valve stem sealed right there. 
put new valve stem seals on it, put it back together, you're in Fat City. Right? Okay. This is what it looks like, what the spark plugs are subject to look like when you got valve stem seal issues. Now, a lot of the times you won't have a problem put on one or two spark plugs, but sometimes you'll have it on just about all of them. And this one here was pretty egregious, and that means it was bad. And uh, this one over here, see that right there? Here's one right here on this wall. That's another one. That's a valve stem seal issue. And what happens is it wets the spark plug with just a little bit of oil, and then it cooks it off, and it leaves whatever was the residue from being cooked off, and it keeps piling up on there. And over a period of time, you wind up with spark plugs that look all crappy and everything. Now, visible symptoms, whenever you crank it up, you see a puff of smoke. Like that right there. Uh, sometimes you get a little bit of smoke, sometimes you get a lot of smoke. If the valve stem seals are really bad, if you let it idle for a while, you'll start seeing smoke when it's idling. All right. Now, so the intake valve stem has vacuum right down here. And if the valve stem seal is leaking, that low pressure, the atmospheric pressure, if you will, that's inside the crankcase, will basically push that oil down past the valve stem seal and past the valve guide, and it goes into the cylinder, and it piles, you know, that residue piles up on the back of the valves, and it messes the spark plugs up and all that. Uh, it just loves to draw that engine oil past those things. And so the problem is, there's what one looks like. The seals get hard and cracked and all that splatters around under the valve cover and make its way down past the valve and into the power producing combustion chambers and out the tailpipe. It's not quite so bad to happen on the exhaust valves. Why? The pressure's higher in the exhaust stream. You got pulses of pressure in the exhaust stream. So if it's happening, it's typically happening on it. That doesn't mean you just change the intake valves steel seals. You change them all. Um, all right. Valve still seems though can leak really bad so they actually push the O2 sensor readings away to stoichiometry. One time we put valve stem seals on a uh, 91 uh, Dodge pickup truck in here. It had a V8 in it and uh, the valve stem seals the part house sent us were not good ones. They were crappy. And what they wanted to do was walk up the valve stem you know, because they were just crappy seals. And uh, it started pulling a lot in there. We had already replaced the oxygen sensor on it for another problem, but uh, because of the guy was, you know, over yonder in the other town, he put a, uh, took it by the Dodge place and they wanted to put a, another oxygen sensor on it. But anyway, he called me and I said, bring it back over here. I think I know what's wrong with it. It was smoking and idle. Well, see that, whenever that uh, oil takes up some of that oxygen, you know, it's gonna screw up your oxygen sensor that doesn't happen a lot, but it can if it's really bad anyway. We have to put some better seals in there. Um, another side effect is whenever sometimes you'll get an EGR surge that goes away when you unplug the EGR valve. That can be because of these same puffy deposits on the spark plugs. I've seen that. Partially fouled spark plugs can create an EGR surge. Now sometimes when you got an EGR surge, you've actually you've genuinely got EGR trouble. All right, so we got minimal invasion here. What we're basically wanting to do, we used to do this a lot on the ones that were made like this. This is not really hard to do. Uh, I mean, we used to, it was a matter of fact, the first time I ever saw anybody do it was in that independent shop I worked at over at Enterprise. And Mike, the guy that was over there, he would routinely change valve stem seals on Chevrolet. Here though, don't opt for cheap valve stem seals. Get good ones or you'll be doing the job all over. I like the ones like this. They either have that, that spring right there or a garter spring on there, the really good ones. And uh, incidentally, if, you're, if you ever take a head over there to Billy, where we were talking about getting your machine to top done, he wants the valve stem seals that came out of your gasket set over there with it. <laughs> you know, when you take it to him, he's going to say, I need your valve stem seals, because he doesn't have just buckets of valve stem seals around. He wants yours that you bought with, it, with your kit. All right, this one here, the first time I ran into this Camry, was the one that my lunch partner drives. He was telling me it would make the most, maybe like 280,000 miles on it, or 2.2, just like the one on our stand out here. All right, now this is how the Camry is set up. All right, this thing right here, you got a cam follower. Now that disc right there is not present on those Toyotas. Each one of the cam followers can, has got between the, the little part inside that rides against the uh, head of the valve, 
you measure those with a mic to see what the clearance is. On the old ones I worked on in the Volkswagen place, we had to put different thicknesses of discs on here to get this clearance right. And that was something we did routinely when I was at the Volkswagen place. The valve stem seal is right, is, right, is right down here. So you got those two springs and you got your keepers. and That's a pretty good little uh, deal one on that. There's your intake port right there. Okay. Now, in order to do that, see, there's a little Sirocco, like the cars I used to work on over there at the dealer. We, uh, the valve uh, adjustment on one of those back in the early 80s was, was, was $18. <laughs> That's what we charged labor to do a valve adjustment. But we'd put a valve cover gasket and we'd adjust all the valves here. Uh, below the camshaft and above the valve springs, you got this polished cam follower, which Toyota calls a lifter, and that rides in a machine bore and transmits the force of the rotating load to the valve stem. So you don't really have a lifter per se. You don't have anything that's hydraulic in there on this particular type of setup, typically. Uh, but, uh, anyway, when you remove the cam follower, you can see the valve spring retainers, but they're down in a daggum hole. You know, so you can't get a regular spring compressor in there. And this Toyota dealership I called over there, I says, what do y'all do when you need to put valve stem seals on a Toyota Camry? And they says, we pull the head off and we send it to the machine shop. The only problem with that is the labor for pulling the head off of a Camry, especially one of these newer ones, like a, the ones with the time and chains instead of belt, is 17 hours. Do the math. 17 hours labor plus gaskets, that's a $2,000 job. There has to be a better way, right? But anyway, I said, let's just go ahead and try this. Uh, I consulted with the Mac tool man, found he could provide me with a spring compressor adapter to deal with this kind of valve spring arrangement. That's what it looks like right there. That funky little thing. But it was basically made to use with a regular valve spring compressor on a bench. And I said, I don't want that. I want to do the one on, I want to do it on the car. And so I was going to have to build something. I was going to have to do it with Jonathan Price and engineer something, right? All right. So, I got a quarter inch, you know these little steel plates you see around there like I've got all over the place? I drilled a whole bunch of holes in random spots in that one. And I put that bolt in there and put Loctite on it so this plate would swivel around and around. And uh, this little tool that I bought, I got a little piece of a bracket and I ground it down until it would go into that little slot, you know, where the valve spring. And then I got the, cut this, you know, I cut this piece of an old bent uh, hose, I mean the C-clamp up there and I've welded a socket to this. And so basically we could use that. We mounted that one in an appropriate place, put this on top of the valve spring, screw that down, and it pushes it down out of the way while you got air pressure in your spark plug hole to keep the valve from falling out. Pull it out, change your seal, put it back together. Not that much to it. Doesn't need a lot of muscle to match those little valve spring. Matter of fact, one of those Camry intake valves, and I think I got one in here somewhere, is about the size of something you'd see in a Briggs and Stratton engine. See that one up there? See how tiny that valve is? That came out of the Toyota Camry. It came out of a 2002 Toyota Camry, by the way. And it's a little bitty thing. It looks like a lawnmower valve, doesn't it? And that's where that, that, and that one there is bent. But anyway, uh, the, the valve springs are pretty weak. All right, so you use this C-clamp, cut in half the steel plate, built that little tool. Still got that tool. It's over here in one of these drawers. All right, this job went really well, but had, for, had a little hitch here. Since the student that did the work neglected to put a bolt to keep the camshaft scissor gear loaded, we had a clicking noise under the valve cover when we started the engine. It was really nasty. Ran good, but it was a clicking noise. Now, how many of you guys have ever put a wrench on a cam gear and turned the camshaft with a wrench? What does it feel like? Stiff, easy, stiff, easy, stiff, easy, right? It goes doom, 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 doom. Well, when those gears, if you've got this thing directly geared and you're driving it, those gears are just going to beat the stuffings out of each other and make a terrible noise. Now, Volkswagen Bugs back in the day, they used to have a camshaft that had 11 different grind angles. Started at zero and went to zero to plus, you know, one, two, three, four, five, and zero minus one, two, three, four, five. And when the guy would build in the engine, you had to select the one that with the right grind so that it wouldn't, wouldn't be too tight, but there'd be no lash, you see. And so that was, if you didn't do that, you'd have a noisy engine. Wouldn't hurt anything, it'd just be noisy. And you don't want that kind of sound coming out of that thing. Well, what Ford and them did, a GM, they would put gears in there that were this phenolic material 
they were strong enough to pretty much handle it, but they didn't make a racket. I mean, they could bounce like that, they didn't make a racket. Well, the only problem with that is one day those gears would bust and it would be just like your time had changed on it. And you're sitting here and you're going, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you got compression on like one cylinder out of six or something. So what Toyota did, and it was pretty doggone brilliant, they got a, two gears that were made to go together with a cavity in between them, and they got a spring in there. And that spring is actually, when you load that gear so that the teeth are lined up with that spring pushed, you run a six millimeter bolt through it and it keeps it like that until you line up your timing marks and set that thing down in there so that the two camshafts are driven. See, one belt drives the camshaft like on that one Dustin was working on, and then the gears, you know, the gear on the other camshaft drives the other one. But anyway, this scissor gear is what they call them because the teeth can do this. And because of that springs there, it's constantly got pressure pinching the teeth on the other camshaft all the time, and it keeps it from making a racket. Problem is, if you don't do what's right here, this service bolt, you find the place where the threads are in the other gear, and you run that bolt through there and tighten it up, then you take it out when you're done so that you didn't unload your scissor gears. Now, if you do, it's not the end of the world because you can do it with you know a couple of pairs of channel locks. You put it back in like it's supposed to be. So anyway, just remember that if you're ever working on one that's got scissor gears, and that's going to be a Toyota or a Lexus or something like that. So what do you do? Forget to load it? Yeah, you're supposed to load it. Just Basically, it will jump over so that the gears are lined up with it unloaded. I mean, the two gears, teeth are lined up. And when you load it, you pull it back so that the gears, i got a camshaft I can show you over here that I've saved on the other, the other shop out of a Lexus LS400. But anyway, it, that's basically, the, this is a scissor gear. You might even notice it shows that there's two gears that are made to match one another with a cavity in between. Anyway, so he had to pull the camshaft, load the gears, install a bolt, reinstall the camshaft, and remove the bolt, the spring-loaded scissor gears. That's an ingenious way of getting rid of that noise. Fast forward five years, this same friend of mine called about a 2002 Camry with just under 95,000 was puffing smoke on startup like the older one did. This was an engine of a different color. This thing was a different critter than the other one. It was still a small one, the VVTI engine. It's got a small, a similar valve configuration, but the camshafts are driven by a chain with a hydraulic tensioner, variable valve timing on the intake camshaft too, and the labor time to remove the heads is 17 hours. That's what I was talking about earlier. And you've seen these before, haven't you? That looks commonly, that looks, that looks familiar, doesn't it? I mean, you just see them. Basically, you got VVTI over there. We're going to dive in and see what happens. If we had to pull the head, we'd be no worse off. And if I needed to have the head pulled, I'd just let Justin do it anyway because he's the head puller. All right. Okay, with valve cover off and the engine on number one top dead center compression, zero TDC on the balancer, and the arrows on the bearing caps lined up with their corresponding marks. Look right here. You see that little teeny tiny arrow up there? And you see that mark right there? Now this is the one that's got variable count timing. And then on the other one, you basically had a mark on that flatter gear and all that. But anyway, we basically disengaged it. We got it lined up down here. We made sure these arrows were lined up on both gears. And then we took the tensioner out of the See that tensioner is in the back of the block? You gotta get that out of there. And when you're putting it back in, it's gotta be loaded before you put it back in there. And that's another story. All right, so we untoothed the gear from the chain. And we removed the intake cam shaft, which has the variable valve time and drum on it. And with both of them out of the way, the cam followers just lifted out of there. But, listen to this, put those things in order. Don't throw them in a pile on the bench and then put them back because your valves will be all out of whack. You know what I mean? Because each one of these is a special thickness and it's stamped in there. So what I would do is figure me out a way, have you a little Coke crate or something with a bunch of different little cavities in there and make darn sure you either number those things or something so that there ain't no way that you can get them out of you can't make a mark on them with a punch because they're hard 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 metal and put them make sure you put them in order that's real important uh, when the cylinder is pressurized it's a simple matter to replace the garter spring valve stem seal all right you see my tool right here on that one put the wrong thing in my pocket that one right there with a the tool in place see i got that c clamp bolt it down there, it loops over, and it's basically pushing down, and this big old uh, window on each side of that tool lets you get those valve keepers out. And of course, this was, David Buck was the one that did this, by the way, that got it here the other day, he's the one that did it. All right, so basically you had to hold that, you know, with a, basically with a wrench you hold it to start with, and you screw that bolt out, and you get those out, it was this cam, you know, 
and there's your valve stem seal down in that hole what it looks like before you pull it out. You just got to pull it out with whatever you can grab a hold of it with, you know. And once you get it out of there, it was hard and it was cracked and it wasn't sealing worth the crap. That was actually one of the seals that came out of it. Um, put the camshaft back in, and in time, it took a little bit of doing, but we tinkered with it really careful until we got the alarm lined up. We put a little bit of grease on top of each cam follower uh, that we put back in there. And so, anyway, we had to put the intake camshaft in time first, mesh the exhaust cam gear with the chain, and then we installed the camshaft, settled the journals into their saddles. Here's something else you need to know that's really important. Each one of those camshaft journals is matched to this place where it's bolted on there. And if you mix those things up, usually they're numbered, but if you mix those things up and you try to just put them on there any kind of way, you're going to be torquing one down, it's going to go pop, and you're going to break it. Or it's going to be too tight, it's going to gall when it starts up. So make darn sure you keep those things in order too. It, uh, whenever it's, it's always best to err on the side of caution. Keep everything in order the way you pulled it out. I don't care if it's that gum spark plugs. You want to know where it came from. For whatever reason, if you want to read this spark plug, or basically if you want to make sure you put it back where it was, and don't just feel like it be I ate, because it won't. You know what I mean? I mean, you get in some trouble like that in her flash. With the chain tensioner loaded and reinstalled, then we had to re un 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 re unload it with a long screwdriver after we loaded it. Uh, we were ready to valve cover the baby, and it was a success. We had no smoke, everything was wonderful, did just fine. but. We conclusively proved you didn't have to pull a cylinder head on a 2002 2.4 liter Camry to replace the valve stem seals. Didn't have to do it. Didn't need to spend $2,000 worth of parts and labor. We did have to buy a valve cover gasket. And you, as somebody that's done a few of these can do this job in a half a day. You get where I'm going? And the, the labor you would charge on it is what you would ordinarily charge to replace the camshafts. Like if you were putting camshafts in it, and you'd add a little bit for your valve stem seals. But you don't have to pull the head off the head of the machine shop on that. Uh, but the shop manual doesn't say that you can do this. You look at the shop manual, it'll tell you to pull the head off and send it out to get it rebuilt. You don't have to do that for that. All right. All right, you got that. Let's see if I can do it. That's the end of the slideshow. Okay, everybody's got This is a the plain old deal. Tell me everything that you know that you've learned today. No disrespect intended. You can pull the valve stem seals out of the without taking the head off. Or just about any other one. Or a Lexus. You know, it's doable. And when somebody comes in and is smoking when they first started up, when Alan came in here with his first Toyota, his, his was so bad, so bad it would fill up the whole parking lot with smoke. And the tool... You know that makes a thing you can screw the spark plug in and then screw it back in the hole? Where the spark plug come in, like goes in the block, and if it's burning oil on that cylinder, it keeps from finding out the spark plug. Yeah, they call that a non fowler. Those things have been around for about 50 years. Uh, a lot of people use those, but that's just basically like a, a, a band aid. <laughs> it's basically, it screws in the spark plug, it's going to go a hole in the bottom of it, and it'll still fire the mix, but you know, and it keeps the plug from fouling out, and it ain't really all that great, I don't think. Now, this was my thing I was talking about. See all the holes I got drilled in there? And this right here will swivel around. So what you do is you find the one, you swivel it around where one of these holes, it doesn't really matter which one lines up with the cam uh, cap saddle, and you put a bolt in there and snug it down. And then what you got is this right here. See, I put a socket on there. And this is the little part that I got off the Mac tool truck. And it came in this box. Now this is a a TOY-165 made by AST. It's a valve keeper installation kit. And it's applicable to a 3SFE Camry, MR2 Corolla, 3SFE and 3SGE Celica, blah, 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 all of those. Made in USA. I don't know if you can even still buy one of these or not. But I will tell you that I got this one off the Mac tool truck and it didn't cost all that much. And that's what that little sucker looks like. And I actually made this to go on there and work with my C-Clamp. Now it fits tight. Whenever I get it on there, it's really aggravating to get it out. But see, you can see how that, the way it's made, would slide into that slot and it would push down on that valve when you, you got this right here, this uh, you know, thread that's helping you and all that. But that's my little homemade tool to do that with. Where there's a will, there's a way. Now if you just take a magnet and put in a socket and whack the uh, top of the spring, the keeper will jump out on that magnet. 
that's fine until you get ready to put them darn things back in there. You better have a way to make it happen because you got to hold a spring down while you're putting them in. There was supposed to be some kind of a kit that you could get and you just put the little keepers in there and you just shove it down in them and they go back in place. I never have been able to get that to work. You know, I mean, I've actually got one of them tools in there, but I'm not impressed with it. So, uh, but anyway, that right there is something that, that you won't get nowhere else. Now, I did write an article for Motor Age about it years ago, and the title of it was It Can Be Done. And so, uh, that's a neat little procedure 